Hello, you're about to go into round two, and as you do, the rounds from this point will now be more about execution of your strategy and more about tactics than mission planning. And now that you're somewhat familiar with BizFighter, we wanted to show you some key success factors you need to know on each BizFighter screen as you go into the round. So make sure you don't miss these things. And as a note, the numbers that you'll see on the screens in this demo are not from your specific competition. They're just placeholders for the demo, so ignore the numbers that you see on the screens. With your plan, your mission, and customer segments in mind, you can analyze your competencies on the strategic dialogue screen. You can think about and consider where you need to improve, what you're good at, but as you invest in any of these areas, just be aware that the costs really can add up fast. But it's up to you to think about where you invest, and as you probably saw in round one, you can't bid on some programs if your systems integration competency is not at a level five, and in some cases, if your CMMI is not at least a three. And think about you know areas in bidding, services, that are more or less important to your company in this round. And as you look at results from the past rounds, you can probably begin to deduce which of your competitors might have invested in systems integration or CMMI. So when you're investing in your supply chain on this screen, that's one of the boxes that I checked, it can give you a lot of benefit and it can really be a good complement to what you do on the strategic supply chain uh, screen as well. And at the bottom of the screen, when you partner, both your company's competencies and your partner's competencies will be applied to the program. And any follow-on production programs will be yours exclusively and not shared with your partner. And some other details on partnering, you can only use three partners throughout the entire competition. And you use one partnering opportunity up when you bid with the partner, whether or not you win or lose on that bid. And you can only use a given partner one time in the entire competition. Regarding Six Sigma projects, that can really help you iron out the wrinkles you might have in parts of your company. So you might want to consider whether you want to invest in more Six Sigma project capacity for next year. It does take a year for those programs to become available. And also from strategic dialogues, you can access business development. And just a couple of points. Your solution marketing budget here at the top of the screen is spent on advertising that is directed at the segments that you allocate to uh, below. So your better competencies with specific market segments are not only going to help you win programs in that segment, but can also reduce the risk on the programs that you eventually win in that segment. The program details screen accessed here gives you a ton of great data by contract and by segment. And you can see it includes uh, the bid year, the expected bid fee rate, technology expectations, etc. And if I scroll over, you can see that there's a lot of detail about each of the programs available to you. And the data on the program detail screen updates dynamically as your company's competencies change, which affects the total cost load that you offer to your customers. And a few details on the operations review screen. Your follow-on non-competitive programs are shown in this column right next to the development program, as opposed to production-only programs that are shown here, and that are competitive. You can only bid on six competitive contracts each round, but that six renews each year. And programs that are not one in the first year that they're available will remain open for bidding in later years until they're won. I should also mention that you can get to a target chart from this screen, if you click at the bottom, it gives you a lot of information about SPI and CPI for your programs and will help you focus your efforts. On the strategic supply chain screen, you can make specific investments uh, that represent time that you're spending working with your suppliers to improve quality or delivery. All right, a few details on the HR reviews and workforce planning screen. The top of the screen is about your current staffing position. 
So you can hire in the current year. You can also fire people if you want to. And the way I would do that is just put in a negative number. You can also hire contract employees in this column, but be aware of the costs and benefits of that approach. And you really wanna keep an eye on your utilizations. You can choose to hire people to start in 12 months instead of immediately. So I could hire 20 people to start in 12 months instead of starting immediately. And when I do that, you can see it has a real impact on my hiring cost. It reduces it. And this will also help you in managing your utilizations in the current year as well. But this is about next year. So the bar height is what you're committed to given the programs that are currently in play at your company. The diamond shape is actually the forecasted FTE's full-time equivalents that you'll have next year. So for integration and test, we're forecast to have 27. The goal is to try to align the diamond shape with the top of the bar so you can hire up or down accordingly. And on top of this bar representing the staff committed for next year, you will also get as you bid on programs, another bar on top of it that represents your bidding based on probability of win. And one of the questions or one of the things you might want to consider as you balance your current staffing with your needs for next year, can you push or pull back your staffing assignments on specific programs to get ahead of or to slow down the schedule in those programs? And if you do that in aggregate across programs, or at least on your big programs, you might be able to smooth out some of your current staffing and balance next year's staffing too with your needs. Other things to consider on this screen, you know, salaries for engineering. Are you above or below market averages? And you can click this button in the middle of the screen to analyze as you get an understanding of what effort will be needed, higher or lower, in specific functions year to year going forward. And on the annual operating plan and finance screen, you can access summary financial information as forecasted for your company overall based on the decisions that you've made so far. So it shows you a lot of interesting information, including short-term debt. You can also issue or buy back stock. You can pay a dividend. And consider too, down here, whether the balance between accounts receivable and accounts payable is in balance. And other metrics that we've given you on the right, backlog, cash, working capital, etc. And you can access throughout the competition a pro forma income statement that gives you summary financial information. You can also access a balance sheet. Okay, let's come back to the operations review screen and I wanted to open a program. Let me go and click on bidding details. This has some great information including this care about horizontal bar chart at the bottom uh, that shows you a lot about the customer's needs and wants. Are they more price sensitive? They are in this case. Or in some programs you'll find they're more technology sensitive. Should also mention in this case no initial capital but if there was you pay that after you win the program when sales begin. And a few details on bidding on programs. If I click on bid decisions I now have a series of sliders decisions I can make. And bid and proposal budget, the first slider, is a corporate expense. It's not paid by the customer. But all else being equal, a BMP budget will make a difference in winning or losing a bid. It takes risk out of the program, and it's a marketing tool that represents your company and your brand. And so overall, it can increase your chances of winning the bid. And you might consider half a percent or 2% of revenue as kind of a benchmark. The product development system compliance slider can also take risk out of the solution that you're presenting in your bid, but it can add cost. So what's the trade-off for you? And bid fee rate specifically starts at a very low number. You see it's 8%. And make sure, you, though, that you look at the bidding details tab to understand what the customer is expecting and then adjust accordingly. And in terms of now bidding, you can choose suppliers. You can adjust technology levels on your bids up or down these can really impact your proposed cost if you look at the the technology update results it's really bringing the cost down a lot but the question is what is that how does that tie into the customer's technology sensitivity and what they're going to 
think about the solution that you're presenting. And as you make ongoing decisions for programs that are already underway, that you've already won, there are a number of decisions you can make, including meetings, both internally and externally. You can think about the cost and benefit of doing that. You can update results. And this, you know, meetings can add costs, but maybe they increase efficiency and CPAR ratings, uh, especially in the earlier stages of your programs. Pushing management reserves can make a difference in terms of helping your cost position, but it impacts attrition as well and possibly employer of choice. Uh, risk mitigation and opportunity exploitation. You have $4 million of risk that could be taken out of this program if you apply some Six Sigma efforts. You can update technologies up or down, but you want to be aware not only of the impact on cost for this program, but also the impact on the customer C part. And on our active programs, we can click the scheduling decisions tab where we can push or contract the schedule on individual contracts to impact your overall staffing utilization, which is shown here in this column on the right side of the screen. I can adjust my program management office staffing up and then I can auto sync all the rest of the functions on the program by clicking this button. And I should mention that programs in BizFighter end when they're scheduled to end. You can't rebaseline the program or finish it early or late. And if I click the Performance EVM tab, I get a whole lot of detailed data for the program in the current year. So it's a little more detailed information about the costs, profit, and schedule information on the program and expected performance as well. And if you click on this, the green button, the work status reports give you detailed information about each of your programs and very specifically gives you CPIs, SPIs, and other information by resource. And make sure you look at your suppliers' CPIs and SPIs too. Okay, that's a quick overview of some of the details of BizFighter. Good luck.